Okay, I think it's close enough to 10 o'clock that we can go ahead and get started. Um, please let me know if you guys can't hear me or if the sound is not perfect. I will certainly try to fix that for you. Um, just let me know in chat if you'd like, or if you have any questions during the presentation, you can also um, send that to me via chat. And I will just send out a chat message in case the sound is completely muted for some of you. While I'm waiting for a response to that, um, welcome to the presentation. I'm very glad to have you all here today. My name is Craig Lefteroff, and I am with the Nebraska Library Commission, and today we are going to be talking a bit about our WordPress network. We have a WordPress network called Nebraska Libraries on the Web, and I'll give you a little information about that. Um, okay, looks like we're all right. Um, I am not going to give you an hour-long PowerPoint, but I do want to present some slides to start off to give you some basic information about what we do and how the network operates. Just a second. Okay, so a lot of information on this slide. Basically, there are two people here at the commission who are responsible for the WordPress network. My colleague Diane deals with issues uh, relating to installation, configuration, backups, security, hardware, and all that sort of back end stuff. My role is more or less to help librarians and people in uh, Nebraska libraries get set up with websites and tweak those websites to their specifications. So if there's something that they specifically need their website to do, if they have uh, you know, some, a catalog search that they want embedded, or if they want their website to look a certain way, I'll help them with those sort of aesthetic features. If they want a certain degree of functionality, I'll try to find a plugin that will satisfy those requirements. And also, um, I do create new sites by cloning, and we'll talk a bit more about that in the following slides. Okay, so this is our website, essentially. This is the front page of our network where people go to get information. Uh, it's free to Nebraska libraries, and as part of the accreditation process in our state, Nebraska libraries can get points for posting certain things on their website, things like policies or various other uh, resources that they offer. So Nebraska libraries on the web gives them a free way to do this. We don't charge any money, of course. The graphic by the tree with the bird says that we currently host more than 50 of Nebraska's library websites, and that's actually a little out of date. At this point, we have over 100, and I've got a chat. Just one second. Or not. False alarm. Oh, okay. Um, Just one second, I want to make sure that the, uh, the mic is working properly. Okay. While I'm waiting for a response about that, um, let me go ahead and continue. As I said, we have over 100 websites, and we also provide websites for the four systems that administer our Nebraska library, uh, public libraries. The program began in 2010, so it's been running for about six or seven years. Before I go on, is anyone else having issues with the sound? I have one person who apparently can't hear. Okay. Hmm. Alrighty, thank you. It appears that the sound is working. I just have one person who's having issues. So let me just 
respond and see if we can work that out quickly. resolve the issue. Um, so it's been around for quite a few years and we have 225 different users on our site at the moment. Um, as I said, Diane mostly takes care of the, the more hardware sort of techie servery stuff. I can tell you that our network is installed on a Windows machine and that's apparently um, relatively uncommon. I think most people are still using Apache for their WordPress network. If you guys do have any questions about the installation or configuration, I will be sending out an email after this presentation that has some resources with information about that. If you have any questions specifically for us, I can take those, ask Diane, and then get back to you. Okay, so I mentioned that we clone websites, and the way we do that is by a plugin called NS Cloner. It looks like this. Um, you can buy all sorts of upgrades, of course, as is usual with plugins, but the functionality that we rely on is mostly included in the free service. We do have one site set up as a default. It looks like this. Um, and it's not an empty site. We have some information there, some pages already set up. You can see, hopefully, calendar contact for kids and teens, all these pages that we have included on the default site. We also have a fake post with a fake comment on the default site. And the reason we do that is because when we clone something, it's essentially just a standard uh, duplication of what we had. This way, the site arrives with a bit of information. So our libraries aren't just starting from scratch. They already have some guidance as far as how pages work, how posts work, what you can do with comments. And they can go in and rename the pages if they don't necessarily want to have a Nebraska resources page. They don't have to keep that. They can transfer it into or transform it into something else, pictures of local history, anything that they want. So with that said, let's get away from PowerPoint for a bit. Just going to escape out of here and switch over to the site that we made. So. We've been having issues with our network uh, leading up to this presentation. Of course, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So I went ahead and duplicated a site for us to use during the presentation today. Looks like this. As you can see, it's pretty much identical to our default site. And this is how it would arrive for one of our libraries who wanted to use the service. Once they've been added to the network as an administrator for their site, when they're logged in, they'll see this black bar at the top. And that allows them to go in and customize anything that they want to change on their site. Um, if they click on customize, they have all these options that are available to them. So they can change colors. They can change the title of the site, the site identity. They can change the header image, which is something we'll circle back to, uh, menus, widgets, and so on or they can start from kind of a, a grand perspective and change the theme. A WordPress theme, as many of you know, is essentially the way that a site is controlled, the way it's presented in terms of its look and its functionality. The default site arrives with 2010, which is very stripped down, very basic. So if someone wants to get a little fancier, they can go to their customizer and change it. We have 71 different themes running on our network right now, and that includes child themes, which again, we'll address later. Um, but basically, you can go in and just find something that looks appealing to you, click on Live Preview, and it will show up um, with your current content included. So let's try Graphene. Oh, 
Okay, so you can see it makes major differences in the look and structure of the site. And in some cases, there are problems that might arise with the theme, things that you'd want to change, like you probably don't want black text on a black background, probably not a good idea. Um, if you don't like a theme, you can always click X to exit out of it or go to change and change it uh, to something else. One thing to keep in mind with themes, especially for those of you who are current users of our site, um, or service rather, different themes will have uh, varying levels of functionality. So some themes are going to let you change all sorts of things under the sun on your site. You can see that we've got basic stuff like site identity, colors, header image, and so on here. But if we change it to something that's a little bit more intricate, let's find something intricate. Usually they hang out towards the bottom. Point sounds like a good one. If we change it over to point, instead of just a basic list of stuff that we can change, we've got all sorts of different options. We've got our basics here, site identity, colors, and so on. But if you go into theme options, you can change a plethora of things, everything from the font to pagination, footers, single post, and so on. So aside from the look, uh, the functionality is something that you'll also want to consider when selecting a theme. For those of you who aren't in our networks, who are maybe, uh, you know, dealing with a WordPress multi-site in your own state or thinking about uh, setting up a multi-site installation. Sometimes it's easiest if people want to change a lot of things to create a child theme. Let me switch over to our network admin page here. Um, this would be my login, so I kind of have free reign to change a bunch of different stuff. Um, and if we go to our themes list, We use a plugin called Child Themeify that basically makes it a one-click process to create a child theme. A child theme basically inherits or duplicates a lot of the content from its parent theme, but it allows you to make changes to the code. So you can change things like font, you can change um, what appears on a particular page. We've used child themes in the past because some themes work perfectly, but they had some content that was a little iffy. We had one site that had an RSS icon that was rather off color for a library site. So we made a child theme that blocked that uh, RSS icon out. And you can see from the list, I've got 2010 Weaver, I've got 2010 Weaver Child. If we go into the child theme by clicking edit, it basically tells me that it's inheriting the style sheet from the parent theme. But if I wanted to change something about it, I could do it here. And let me show you how I would do that. Let's just copy this guy over. Usually I'll do this in Firefox because it has a bit more um, robust tools for picking out elements. So if I decide I don't want this to be black, I want my title of the page to be a different color, I would right click on it, say inspect element. In Firefox, this gives me the whole element inspector. And I've got my um, element here, site title A. I can change the color in my um, child theme area, so I'm not doing this for real, just as a kind of how to, but it would basically look like that. And that would override the style sheet that's inherited from the original theme. So then our color would be something different. That's actually black, so it wouldn't make much of a change. But if I wanted it to be purple or white or something like that, and it helps if you do it properly here.
Okay, so I turned it white. It essentially disappeared on this white background, but it's still there. See? Um, the great thing about child themes is that they are generally not affected by updates. You guys can see over here that I have 25 themes waiting to update. And if someone's made major changes to the look or feel of their theme through the customizer, those updates might just wipe them out. A child theme wouldn't be affected. Those um, pretty much stay static. So if you're going to make sweeping changes, if you're going to make a lot of tweaks to your theme, I think a child theme is the way to go. And you can do this manually, but for us, installing that child themeify plugin just makes it incredibly easy. Um, all we have to do is just one click and then go into our child theme and make our changes to our code. I mentioned plugins. I've mentioned the NS Cloner plugin and the child themeify plugin. Um, you'll get varying information about how many plugins you should have on your network. I try not to overload ours too much, not because I think that plugins necessarily slow down the performance of the network, but I think sometimes when you have too many things installed for one uh, issue, they work at odds with one another. So you have things that are trying to do the same thing and that leads to problems with the network. I also think it's tough when you have a lot of plugins to go in and weed the collection, which you really have to do with a, a WordPress network. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we have 63 plugins installed on the network right now. 32 of those are active, 31 are inactive, and that's basically kind of a holding pin for plugins that will be deleted shortly. I don't like to delete anything. Um, without giving people a chance to say, hey, I had this functionality and now it's gone. So I'll usually make a plugin inactive for a few months and then if no one has uh, a comment about it, functionality being missing, I'll go ahead and delete it altogether. I think periodically it's helpful to go in and get rid of stuff that hasn't been updated for quite a while. So if we go into inactive here, Go down to the bottom and take a look at WordPress database backup. If we click on view details, that gives us some reviews, if any exist, of the plugin. It also tells us when it was last updated. In this case, nine months ago, not a big deal. Um, we're actually doing backups through a different means at this point. So this is kind of uh, an unnecessary addition to our network. If we go into WordPress change font size, on the other hand, last updated seven years ago. To me, this is a big red flag. Um, you want things that are updated recently that will work with your network. I think keeping plugins that are not curated or maintained is sort of playing with fire. And while that's loading, we will go back to PowerPoint for just a second. So there are a few plugins that I think would be useful to you if you are going to start um, running your own network or dealing with multiple sites, multiple administrators. One of the big ones that's been helpful for us has been WordFence, which is a security plugin that protects us against brute force logins. It also lets me know via email when somebody tries to reset a password or when an administrator logs in to the system. Um, Diane and I are actually the only two admins, super admins on our WordPress network. So if someone else tries to get in, uh, it's an issue and it's good to get that email. In addition to that, it will tell me, <clears throat> excuse me, the top five failed logins. So you can see that admin and test have been used pretty often to try to get into our network. And I suspect that's probably just, you know, brute force hackers or, or people kind of writing code to try to log in. Um, we don't actually have those as existing users. And I'd recommend that you do the same if you're having a, a multi-site because those tend to pop up again and again at the top of the list. If you're very serious about security, you could also consider changing the URL of your login. Most people use WP login or WP admin. Um, and if you switch it to something else, that just 
removes that sort of common URL that people attack. <clears throat> I mentioned child themify. That's been helpful for us, just creating the child themes. Jetpack is one that's sort of controversial. It's very robust. It does a lot of stuff, and I'll show you that in the next slide. It covers all this ground. So you've got Photon, which speeds up the images and photos and protect and monitor and data backup. You guys can see that some of the um, elements of Jetpack are not active on our site just because I don't think they're necessary. One thing that it does that is an absolute necessity, at least for us, is the publicize feature. And this actually pushes out the content from your website to your various social networks. So if you want the things that your users are writing or posting to appear on their Facebook, Twitter, and so on, Publicize will do it for you. And we'll get more into that later on in the second half of the presentation. Msanity is a relatively recent plugin that I've added, and I did it because we were having issues with people using up their space. Um, when the network began back in 2010, images weren't necessarily super gigantic by default, but now with um, very high resolution cameras or even cameras on a phone, a lot of the time images are taken from those devices and added to the network and they're, you know, super duper gigantic. So Insanity allows me as an administrator to set limits on those and sizes them down automatically. That way I don't have to go to individual sites and check their space um, log or, you know, how much space they have remaining and then go in and try to resize all of their images, which is usually what's causing a lot of the space to be consumed. There are other plugins that do the same thing, but Msanity to me was the most user friendly. I can just go in and put a maximum height and width and so on. So it, it kind of takes care of it for me. And NS Cloner I mentioned before, so if you're going to be uh, creating new sites for people, it's really easy just to make a default and clone that. Another one that I don't have installed yet, but I think I'm going to during our next update is Yoast. Um, and this is basically the most widely acclaimed SEO plugin. There's another plugin that I haven't installed yet that I probably will end up installing called Advanced Custom Fields. And it's again, very highly praised. So if you're doing a multi-site network, it's probably a good idea to think about that. We have not, as of yet, upgraded to the newest version of WordPress, but I looked at some of the features that are available in that update, and a few of the things actually seem like they would duplicate um, elements of the customizer or things that we had done with child themes. One of the big changes is thumbnail previews for PDFs, which right now, pardon me, um, for PDFs that our users update, it just has a generic gray icon. It looks like a document. Um, so if they have a ton of PDFs and a ton of different policies, it's sometimes not that easy to tell them apart just at a glance. Uh, with a thumbnail preview, they'll basically get some idea of what's in the document so they can determine what actually needs to be uploaded to a page, what needs to be put into a menu, and so on. This is a big one for me. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but apparently they're going to start implementing custom CSS into the WordPress customizer. And this would duplicate what we do with the child themes where we go in and find the, the elements that need to be changed and then write the code. So this will apparently be available inside um, each themes customizer in the new version of WordPress. Um, I'm curious to see how this works. It's kind of an interesting development. And they'll also have custom language selection for admins. So if I speak English and my fellow admins speak Spanish, we don't necessarily have to have one uniform language, which is the case with past versions of WordPress. We can choose our own language and then have content presented to us in that language. And there are a few other um, innovations or updates in the new version of WordPress. I'm, actually kind of curious to get that updated and see how everything works. At this point, we've about hit the midway uh, for the presentation. And actually, this is the end of dealing with general things about our network and plugins and so on. So if you guys have any questions, please send, uh, enter them into the chat box and we'll talk about them.
while you guys are thinking, I actually forgot to say that I was really happy to see so many people from Ohio and Kentucky signed up for the webinar. I used to live in Versailles, Kentucky, just down the road from KDLA. So it was very nice to see some of you signed up to attend. And of course, it's always nice to see our Nebraska libraries on the web participants as well. Okay, so no questions. I will keep going. And the next, or I should say the second portion of the presentation will probably be most helpful to people who are already using our services. I did ask for some questions to address during this presentation from you guys, and you really came through and gave me some good ideas. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that you had asked. And to do that, we'll go ahead and get out of PowerPoint and go back into our kind of fake cloned WordPress site here. I had a question about the header image, how to change it, where to get an image, how to size it down, and so on. So many themes arrive with this image right in the middle at the top, this header image. And you can change this in the customize option. So if we click on customize here, and then go into header image, for most themes, you're actually going to get the dimensions that are recommended right here. Some themes will include some additional header images as alternatives. So for this time of year, you might select this one. But you don't necessarily have to use what's included. You can actually track down your own images. Um, you'll want to make sure that the images are not governed by copyright, that they're available to you. One of the sites that I've recommended to people recently has been pixabay.com. There are a multi, uh, a plethora of sort of free use image sites on the internet, but this one is very large, so it has a lot of the um, the topics that you might want to find and implement on your site. If you're looking for something seasonal, you might say winter. Okay, and this looks all right to me, a little bit of color. When I've helped people with the header image in the past, I've recommended that they use a program called Earthen View to do their editing. It's a free program, um, very small, so you're not waiting all day for the download and so on. So let me just bring that up. Okay, and what I'll do after I check and make sure this is free for use, no attribution required and so on, is basically just copy the image and paste that into Earth and View. Okay, so I've got my image. It tells me it's 960 by 640. I did not uh, memorize the dimensions needed, so I'll go back to our page and check that. It needs to be 940 by 198. The thing that I like about Earth and View is you can click and drag to resize things. So 960 by 640, what I'll do is just start over here, click and drag across, and if you look at the top of our screen there, it's telling me as I drag the dimensions of the selection. So 940, You almost need a surgeon's hand to do this. Okay, so we've got 940 by 254. And if we need it to be 198, I think, yes, 198, I will just start at the top here and bring this guy down. Okay, so 940 by 198. At this point, I will go ahead and edit and crop that selection. So we've got... Uh, exactly what we need, 940 by 198. I'll just save it in a place that I can recall. Usually I put stuff on the desktop so they don't get lost. And that's done. Um, now at this point I can click Add New Image here in the customizer for my site. 
Let's go ahead and upload that file. Find it on our desktop. Double click it. And you will have the option to select and crop, even though we just cropped it down to its um, required dimensions. We can say skip cropping because it's basically perfect. It's exactly what we need. Okay, and now that's on our site. You will need to hit save and publish to make it official. And now when we go to the site, we've swapped out the header image. So it's a few steps, but it's not very involved. It's a pretty easy process. And I will go back to the dashboard on our site to address the next question. So this is sort of the admin side, the back end of the site. We were just looking at the the version of the page that users would see, that patrons would see, but this is where we actually build things and tweak things. I mentioned before that people have issues with space sometimes. You can tell that when you go into your dashboard because we have the at a glance section here. It tells you how much storage space is allotted <clears throat> and also how much space is currently being consumed. 1% of space is obviously not a big deal, but let's just assume we're pretty close to say 94% space used, and we want to free up some of that space. An easy way to do that would be to shrink down some of your images, especially if they were uploaded, excuse me, prior to uh, msanity being active on the network and kind of taking care of the stuff for us automatically. So if we go into media library, It shows us everything that we've uploaded, including our winter header right there. Um, this image is quite big, 2,000 by 1,500. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be that large on our page, depending on how we're using it. If you're just having an image that's essentially sitting off to the side of some text, it doesn't need to be gigantic. Um, and as I said, with devices set to default, for the largest possible image. Sometimes it's useful to go in and shrink them down. If I decide that I wanted to shrink this down and make it a bit more manageable, I would open up the image like this. So it's basically got the attachment details at the top and it's got all these other things. I'm going to go down to edit image at the bottom. And you have a scale feature built into WordPress. So if I decide that 1,000 is plenty big for this photo. It basically automatically gives me um, the other dimension. So if I change something in this box, it corresponds in the second box, and then I can click Scale. Makes it smaller, but again, if this is basically just sitting on your page beside some text, you don't need it to be you know, enormous, so this should work. If you do that to multiple image that, images, that will free up a lot of space on your site. And if we go back to our dashboard for this site, I suspect it probably hasn't changed. 1% used. Um, it might be a little different in terms of the megs consumed. I didn't memorize that last number. Sorry, guys. But uh, for something that, you know, a site that's using around 95 96%, that would be an easy way to get that number down. Okay, so next question, uploading. Um, some people are basically adding policies and procedures and various kinds of documents to their WordPress site. And they might have run into some problems because WordPress does not automatically accept Microsoft Office formats. So if I open up Microsoft Office, Word in this case, and say something like policies, the library will not allow food and drinks 
the Nebraska room. Let's say we have a local history collection with older books. We don't want uh, people bringing in coffee and whatnot. So I will go ahead and save this as a document file. And then we'll go back to our WordPress site. When we upload things, we're putting them into the media section. I know that sort of makes you think about images, but um, in this case, we are also adding a document. So if I click on Add New, go through the process of selecting a file, and click on my policies, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't know what to do with this Microsoft Word document. Thankfully, Microsoft Word allows us to convert things, and we do that by going to File, then going to Export, and we're going to turn this into a PDF. So instead of it being a document file, we're going to make it a sort of finished, uh, unchangeable PDF. Of course, you do want to keep your original Word document file in case uh, changes do arise later or you want to tweak things. You can then export that new version as a new PDF, but for now, We'll just create this as PDF, put it on the desktop so we can find it. And it'll probably give us a pop up here. Yes, it did. So now we'll go back to our website, back to the dashboard and say select files. And instead of clicking on the Microsoft Word version, we're going to click on the PDF. And now that is on our site. So it's in our library. Right here, we've got policies, and it's all set to be used on our page. Um, one thing about PDFs that's very useful is that you can create a page that points directly to the PDF. So if I go in and grab the URL from this PDF, this is basically the address that points right to that document, I'll just copy it and then create a new page. And there are multiple ways to do this on our network. You can go up here and say new page, or you can go here and say add new to your pages. You have a ton of options as most users of our network have seen, of course, but if you go down to the bottom, you have the option to change this from a normal WordPress URL to a custom URL, which means when someone opens up this page, they would go straight to that policies document. Policies for Nebraska Room. And then we'll publish it. And it is a live page on our site. Um, if we go into our page here, you see it's been added as a link. So now if a patron, if a user comes to our page and clicks on this, it goes straight to the PDF. They don't have to click through a million different um, embedded links and so on. It's just a straight shot right to the policies document. Okay, next question would be about plugins and widgets. For plugins, you guys really don't have to worry too much about them. If there's something that you want to do that doesn't seem to be available on your site, you can always let me know and we'll seek out a plugin for you that will resolve that issue. Widgets are uh, something that are available to you, and there are a ton of options with widgets. So on your dashboard, if you scroll down the page to Appearance and then go to Widgets, you will see all this sort of stuff. Um, available widgets, we've got two columns of options. Your page also arrives with some widgets already included, and if you don't want anything that was included, you can always just go over, like for meta, and say delete. We don't need meta on our page, so we'll just delete it out. Categories, don't need it, delete, and so on. Um, you do have multiple widget areas with most themes, so it might be helpful while you're looking at this widget section to go ahead and load up your page as well. And I'm just going to open up our page in a new tab. That way, when you add stuff or delete stuff, you can tell where it's located on the page. So if I decide I want Google Translator, 
in my secondary widget area and I click on add. Let's just say translate page is the title and save it. Now I can go back over to my live site and refresh it. And I know it's not, uh, it's sort of difficult to differentiate between the first widget area and the second widget area, but these are actually two different sections. You also have second footer widget, fourth footer widget. So it gets rather cramped um, depending on your theme and the structure of your page. We'll go ahead and delete this out for now. One thing that I did want to point out in terms of widgets is that you have a text widget available, which is kind of a catch all. Uh, it's almost like a bucket where you can put all sorts of stuff, you know, code, you can put text and so on. So your text widget will allow you to put in arbitrary text or HTML. And it's really just kind of a blank slate. You've got a title field and then you've got a content field where your code would go. What we've done with this in the past has been to set up things like local forecasts when people want to get the weather. Uh, the weather channel, I think, has a, a widget that's available and you can just copy the code and put it right in. You can also do that with Facebook. You can do it with Twitter. Um, so a lot of those websites and sort of third party social networks will have the code available that you could incorporate into your text widget and then that would appear on your page. If you guys are interested in doing that or if you run into any problems, of course, just get in touch with me and I'll help you out with it. Okay, next question, sending stuff to your social networks. That is handled, oh, I think I have a question. Number of users or site visits. Yes, uh, those, those are available to you. Um, let me see if I have it on this clone site. I don't think that I do, but if I go back to the administrator side, to dashboard. We basically have a site stats section on the dashboard here. And if you don't have this on your page, please let me know. I'll get it set up for you. But it will track the number of visitors per day. You can also see which posts are doing well. So in this case, want to participate was viewed one time. Um, and also the top search, is, which can be very helpful too. Is there a new link for Nebraska Overdrive Library? So that's not necessarily something to deal with Nebraska libraries on the web, but I might let my colleague know that there's um, you know, something pending there. Okay, no problem. Um, so basically, if you're sending stuff out to the social networks, that is through the Jetpack plugin. If you log into your dashboard and you see this, please connect Jetpack, that means that stuff is not going out to Facebook, it's not going out to Twitter and so on, so you'll need to connect it. It's a very easy process. Just click on Connect Jetpack. And wait a few minutes. This will take you out to WordPress.com. Um, this is basically not the same as your login for your website, so it's something new. If you already have an account, you can click on sign in. If not, you can create an account, and I'll see if I can do that now. Okay, so if you've never done this before, you will want to create an account. Again, if your Jetpack is disconnected, you can also get in touch with me and I'll connect that for you. But we have basically um, created our new account here, so we'll sign up and connect Jetpack. And it is authorizing our connection, finishing up and we are connected. If you get to this screen, please do not click on any of the premium options that are available. Um, we don't necessarily need it. It's We're doing backups. We've got all this stuff covered in other ways, so we don't need the pay jetpack to do it for us. Uh, we'll just click on select free. All 
All right. And ordinarily, I don't bother going through the jumpstart thing, but that can kind of give you a walkthrough of what they have available. If we click on skip and then go to publicize, that is where our connections to the social networks are located. So we'll click on the little gear icon that lets us configure the publicize option. And here you should see your social networks that are available. So for publicize in this first section, these are the places that are going to receive your content. When you create a new post, when you put a new photo on your site, it would be pushed out to these um, various other social networks. You also have sharing buttons, which will add these little buttons below each post. So if your users are reading a post and they think this would be really cool to share with their friends, they can send it out to Facebook, theoretically. Ah, there we go. Sorry, guys. I'm a professional. Um, Twitter. Google Plus. And to be honest with you, some of this stuff, I have no idea what it is. I don't know what Telegram is. I assume maybe it's a, a network that is no longer that active, or maybe it's just not in my age range. It's, you know, maybe it's a millennial thing. But those are all available to you. If you're seeing the button that says connect here, it means you do need to connect and log on to your Facebook in order to make that connection and push your content out. Okay, and you will be able to determine who needs to see these posts. You might want to change this from just friends if it's your library page. If you want the public to see it, uh, that would be an option. And then click OK once you're done. And then OK again. All right, so... and I have two different uh, accounts on there. So at this point, it's showing me I'm connected. When I go to create a new post, it's got a section for publicize and it should show that it's connected to my Facebook. So whatever I write here, whatever I publish on my site will go out to Facebook. If you have all that stuff it's showing that it's connected, and that you have the publicized thing on your post, but it's still not showing up on Facebook, sometimes it's necessary to go in and kind of restart that connection, almost like you'd restart a computer. If you go into Jetpack, go back to Publicize, and then just click um, the X to disconnect it. That basically cuts the connection, so whatever is going wrong will be severed, and you would just start from scratch here. So you would say connect, and then enter your login information. That usually does the trick. If that doesn't work, please get in touch with me, and we'll see what's going on. Okay, we have about 10 minutes. So um, next question, how to preview a post or a page before it appears on your site? Very easy to do. If I go into Add New, and I am putting a post in for holiday party, free hot chocolate. I can go here to the Preview button, and it will give me a preview of how this will look on the page. This is really helpful if you're embedding things like images, or if you're dealing with um, you know, code of some sort. But that's basically how you would do it. Speaking of code, you guys do have two different views on your posts and your pages. You have the visual view, which is almost like a Word, uh, Microsoft Word view, a text editor. You just type, and it shows what's there. You also have the text view here. Um, and the difference would be, if I want to emphasize free and make it bold, I can then go to text, and it's got the strong tag. So 
if you guys are familiar with coding or if you prefer to code things rather than use the um, menu that's here, you do have that text option available to you. Okay, and last question, putting post in order. Um, let's leave this page. So right now we don't have a way to put post in order in terms of saying this top post needs to be number nine, this post needs to be number three, and so on. But we have uh, one option that's active on the network that would allow you to keep something at the very top of the page. Right now we got hello world as the only post on our um, website. What I can do if I wanted to make hello world the first thing that people see regardless of how much content is added to the page is go in and click edit. And under the visibility section right over here on the right, you'll click edit again and choose stick this post to the front page. That makes it a sticky post, so it stays at the top no matter what else is added. We'll say OK and update. OK, and now I will go back to my hot chocolate post. Let's go ahead and publish that. Cindy said she also found sticky in quick edit. So yeah, as you guys know with WordPress, there are at least five different ways to do the same thing. Um, that's true of anything from adding new posts to making changes and so on. Okay, so this was our site. It's got hello world, which was our only post, and we just added the new post about the holiday party. We did make this a sticky post, so when we uh, refresh the page, you'll see our sticky post here has a little bit of a blue back background and it's sitting at the top. Even though this is the newer post published just now, sticky post still reigns at the top. This might be helpful if you have a post that is a catalog link or something that you know your patrons are going to go to first. You might wanna keep it a sticky, uh, just to keep it visible and important on the page. And if you guys do need the functionality of selecting certain posts um, to be in a certain order, please let me know because there's probably a way that we can do that if it's important to you. Let me check the time. Okay, we've got about five minutes left to go. Um, did you guys have any questions? Anything that you wanted to address that I didn't talk about? Well, while you're thinking, let me tell you that I will be sending out um, basically the video link for this presentation that will be available on the Commission's YouTube page, and I'll also be sending you a list of resources, things that I didn't cover about dealing with the functions file or installation or all that sort of, um, you know, back-end sort of thing. Um, also, for people who are currently using our site, there are a few beginner or how-to resources that I think might be helpful to you, so I'll be sending that out as well. And I think I have a chat. Updating the calendar, okay. That actually depends on which calendar you're using. We have multiple calendars available. Um, so for the one that's active on our page, let's go to all calendars. Calendar's not found, so let's see, I bet it's this one.
Okay, we'll keep it at gray theme. You can also change the color when you're setting up your calendar. And just say publish. Okay, so you see we have this calendar short code. You might want to do something with that later on. Um, you might want to bring it into text widget. For now, I'm just going into the calendar. And down towards the bottom, we have preview or add event. If I click on that, in this case with this particular calendar, it lets me bring up something and I can say holiday party here and save it. Okay, we also have the add event here. There is a pop-up, sorry. Holiday party, event dates. And sorry about the military time. For some calendars, they require that, and we can't change it, so my apologies. And we'll just keep it going until 2100. No venue added. We could uh, certainly add the library's location. For some reason, I think it's picking up England as our location, but... Sorry if anyone from Ashland is watching this. Uh, we're sending people to have a holiday party at your event. And uh, you can fill in all this other information. Once you're done, click on Publish. There are multiple calendars running on our network right now, so there are multiple ways to do things. If you run into problems with your particular calendar, please let me know, and I'll work with you directly to um, get that working and set up the way you'd like. I hope that answered the question. Okay, so we are close to 11 o'clock. Um, do you guys have any other questions? Okay, well, um, thank you all very much for attending today. I really appreciate it. I know this is sort of the busy season with the end of the year approaching and all your holiday activities. So thanks very much for making time for me. Um, if you do have any questions for people who are using our network or people who are outside the network who attended today, please feel free to email me and, you know, just get in touch. And I will hopefully be doing another one of these in a few months to address other issues with WordPress and talk to our users about things they can do. Um, for now, thanks again and have a great day.